Hey everybody, welcome to another Paint Night Live. My name is Emma Panuski, and thank you so much for joining me in painting Coastal Crab. Um, we're gonna be painting this really sweet crab painting tonight. Um, KT is in the studio with us and they are going to be moderating the comment section. So if you have any questions or um, you just wanna say hi, um, feel free to comment down below. They're gonna be looking at all of your comments and questions and um, chatting with you guys and relaying some of your questions over to me. Hi everyone. Cool, all right, so if you are a newcomer to our Paint Night Lives, then welcome. We're so thrilled to have you here. Um, we do this on YouTube and Facebook at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time every Monday night where we teach you how to paint a painting in just about an hour. They're always really fun and we have a very wide variety of different artists in our studio um, to help you learn how to paint some really fun and unique paintings. So typically we use our plaid folk art Let's Paint Live kit, which is a really great kit. Um, the whole thing with that kit is that once you buy it, you uh, have the uh, freedom to paint all of our Let's Paint Lives. We have a gallery on plaidonline.com of all of our previous Let's Paint Live paintings. So a lot of really great free um, educational tutorials for you on there, but we thought we'd switch it up a little bit. We have a really great color palette that I wanted to tell you guys about. It's called Summerscape, um, and KT is going to put the link in our comment section so that you guys can go check it out. But we come out with a curated color palette of folk art acrylic paints and a couple of really unique and fun specialty paints um, every few months to just celebrate the season we're in. And I thought it would be a really great opportunity to paint with our Summerscape palette because I had, um, the idea to paint a crab on my mind. And as you can see, there are lots of beautiful blues and pinks and reds and oranges. So it worked out really perfectly. So that's what we're gonna be painting with tonight. And just like always, I'm gonna quickly run through all of the supplies that you're gonna to wanna to have in front of you to paint along with me tonight. So you're gonna to wanna to have an 11 by 14 stretched canvas. Um, the folk art acrylic paints that we're gonna be using tonight are Bluebell, Apple Red, Ocean Cruise, Hot Pink, Pink, Jamaican Sea, Pure Orange, and I did forget to add this one to the supply list, but we're also gonna be using Pure Black. So any um, you know, acrylic black paint that you have, feel free to use that tonight. That's a pretty standard paint, so hopefully you will have it. If not, it's a really small detail, so um, you can always add it later. We um, are gonna be using our 10-piece Artist Variety brush set, which is a really great set that we typically use for our um, Let's Paint Lives. Um, it's just a really good variety of brushes. And then a pencil. And I'm gonna be using a blow dryer a couple times tonight. So those are all the things that you're gonna to wanna to have on board. I think we're ready to get started. What do you think, Katie? Yeah, sounds good. There's all right. a couple people in here ready to go. Awesome, hey everybody. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to apply some Jamaican C onto our color palette. And taking our um, one inch or three quarter inch flat brush, we're gonna base coat our entire 11 by 14 canvas with that. I love this teal color. I do too. It is one of my favorites in our Summerscape palette. It's really pretty. Reminds me of like a tropical ocean. Mm -hmm. If there's anyone here that has a question before we get, you know, really into the crab or any color questions or any trouble finding this the uh, Summerscape palette, just let us know in the comments. Yeah.
So a lot of times we get the question, should I paint the sides of my canvas when I'm base coating my canvas? Um, it's totally up to you. I generally do, but just because we're trying to keep our painting a little under an hour, um, that's the only reason I'm not painting my sides. But without the time uh, restraints, I would definitely paint the sides of my canvas right now. Um, Wanda's asking what, or I'm sorry, not Wanda, uh, one of our um, commenters here is asking what color this is. This is Jamaican blue, correct? Jamaican sea, correct. Jamaican sea, okay. And there is no pattern for uh, this particular painting. That is Everyone. correct. So um, I'm going to teach you guys how to draw the shape of our crab tonight. Um, with any type of animal or um, shape like that, it's always going to be a series of simple shapes. So I'm going to walk you guys through exactly how to draw our crab tonight. So that you'll end up with the result that you really love. Okay, so once your canvas is base coated with your Jamaican Sea, I'm not going to rinse my brush quite yet. I'm just going to set my brush to the side and I am going to uh, blow dry this. Once your canvas is pretty dry, we are going to go ahead and apply some of our Bluebell and our Ocean Cruise to our palette. Okay, and so we didn't rinse our brush and that is because for this next step, we use our one inch flat brush. Um, so if I were to clean my brush in my water basin or running water or something like that, obviously our brush would get damp and we don't want that. We want it to be as dry as we can for our next technique that we're gonna use. And so what I want you guys to do is to just take a paper towel and remove as much of our Jamaican Sea from your brush as you can. So that way we're left with a really dry brush still. Okay, and we're not really worried about, um, you know, the colors muddying or turning a color that we don't want it to be because we're working with um, a family of blues. So I'm going to dip my brush into my Ocean Cruise and I'm not applying very much paint at all to my brush, just a little bit. Okay, and I am going to, going left to right and right to left, just back and forth, I'm going to skim the top of my canvas with my Ocean Cruise, picking up a little bit more paint if you need it. And we're going in one direction. We're not you know, going like this and then up and down and side to side. Choose one direction that you wanna go in, whether it be side to side or up and down. Um, that's just your uh, dry brushing technique. It's gonna look much more clean if you just stick to one direction. And all we're really doing is we're just adding a bit of texture to our background, making our painting a little bit more interesting. 
And if you're really not seeing much of your ocean cruise being applied to your canvas at all, then feel free to pick up a little bit more paint. But you can't, you know, take paint away from your brush. You can only add more. So start off with a little amount and then add more as you see fit. Okay, so once you feel like you have um, some good detail going on, you can see those accents of our ocean cruise. We're gonna do the same thing again. Remove as much of that ocean cruise from your brush as you can. And we're gonna repeat that process, but this time with Bluebell. Touching the edges, rubbing our brush off the edges a little bit and in our corners. Okay, and if you feel like you've applied too much of one color, you can always go in with our Jamaican Sea, that's our base coat color that we use, and just kind of um, lighten up some of those colors if you want to. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so now we have a little bit of an interesting texture going on in our background. It's not just a plain base coated color. We have a little bit of interest in our background. So now I'm going to go ahead and rinse my brush. And I'm going to take my blow dryer again and just really quickly go over my canvas and dry it. Okay, so once our canvas is pretty dry, we are ready to start sketching. Before we get started, Katie, do we have any questions right now? Um, not at the moment. Um, I think they were just asking before, um, is there any other teal color that you would suggest if they don't have particularly the Jamaican Sea color? Yeah, any type of teal color would be really great. You could use something like um, Cascade or Castaway. We have a lot of really beautiful, um, like medium hued teal colors in our folk art line. Yes, we do. Uh, all of our teals are really gorgeous. Mm -hmm. so. But really any blue in general would make a great background for this painting. Okay, good question. All right, so I know a lot of you may be a little bit nervous to just freehand our crab tonight, but don't worry, I am going to walk you through it. Okay, so let me see if I can get the crab in a little bit so that you guys can see. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna grab my pencil and I'm gonna think of my canvas in three sections. So, you know, thirds, one, two, three. And the reason I'm thinking of it like that is because if you can kind of see in our finished painting, our claws are gonna make one third of our canvas, the body of our crab is gonna make another third, and then our crab's legs are gonna make the last third. So I want you guys to try to keep that in mind when you're thinking of the ratio of the shapes in your crab. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw the body of our crab. And to do that, we're thinking of thirds. So, you know, a third is about like this. So I'm just kind of, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm going to have a little tick mark here. That's going to be the top of our crab and a little tick mark here. That's going to be the bottom of our crab. 
a little stronger. Okay. And while we're at it, I want to, um, you know, we're leaving about two and a half inches of space on either side of our canvas. And I'm going to make a little tick mark there and then mirror that on the other side. And if you'll notice, you know, the shape of a crab might seem a little bit daunting, but our body of the crab is kind of like a weird oval. I like to think about it like a lemon or a citrus fruit. So if we're thinking about it like that, um, we're gonna draw the shape of a lemon. That's gonna be the body of our crab. So of course, wider in the middle, and then it you know falls as it comes down to the sides. So it's gonna kind of be like that. And then mirror that down. And then we're gonna repeat that on the other side. Kind of like a little bit of a slope going on, making a little lemon. So we have something like that, okay? All right, so now we're gonna move up and we're gonna start to make the claws. So at the two curves, the two ends of your body shape, we're gonna make um, triangle shapes, but we want them to be curved. So not quite at the end, but a little bit close to the edge of our left side of our crab, we're going to make a curved triangle like this, okay? And then coming up here, we're gonna make an oval shape Okay, and now we're gonna make the top of our claw like this. And so the bottom of our claw isn't gonna be quite as long as the top of it, so we're gonna stop there. And then kind of at the center of our claw, we're gonna come in, make a pincher. And I'm gonna kind of um, make a sloped line here. So, so far we're looking like this. Okay, and now we're really gonna do the same thing on the other side. So we're gonna make our curved triangle shape again, about a millimeter away from the edge of our crab. Um, and now we're gonna make another oval that's touching our triangle. And now another pincher, same as before. And you know, the beauty of drawing um, animals or flowers or anything from nature is that it's never going to be perfect um, and it's never perfect in nature either. So you don't have to worry about your crab being totally, totally perfect because if it did, it wouldn't look natural. We want it to look organic um, and you can see too, it's a little abstract. It's very painterly. So if it's not perfect, that's for the best. Okay, so we have our body and our pinchers going on, our claws. So now we're gonna start about a half inch from um, the edge of our crab, and we're gonna make an oval shape. And I'm gonna have a kind of an oval shape coming here that's a little bit um, meatier on one side, on our top side here, you can see that. And then a smaller oval here. And then his leg here, a thin oval. Okay, love it. Donna Dewberry has peeped in and said, you're amazing. Hey, Donna. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so kind of butting up against our first leg, we're going to make a longer oval here. And then a smaller oval touching that one. And then of course you can see the feet of our crab, that's gonna be our thinnest oval. And they have a little bit of a curve to them like this. Okay. So when you think about it as basic shapes, um, drawing and painting gets a lot easier because that's all paintings are. They're just a series of simple shapes. It's like uh, maybe if you're not a painter, you're like a science person. It's like how, you know, 
machines are all made out of simple tools. You have levers and cranks and things like that. That's exactly how art is too, or painting it rather. Smaller oval, bigger oval, and this little Okay, so I'll hold this here for a second and it might be helpful, helpful for you guys to see our finished crab um, if you're painting along, if you want to have it um, on your computer or, you know, print it out, whatever you prefer, that might be helpful too, just so you guys can get a really good idea of the shapes we're trying to achieve. But we're going to do the same thing mirrored on the other side. So starting about a half inch in, we're going to do our oval. Another oval, and then our the end of our claw. And just to reiterate for everybody coming in, there is no pattern for this particular crab, but you can, you know, find you know your own patterns or look at different types of references if Absolutely. that's what you'd like to do. Absolutely. Okay, so when you're done um, sketching out your shapes, it should look something like this, okay? So I'll wait just a second for everyone to catch up. And while I do, I'm gonna go ahead and apply some pure orange to my color palette or to my palette. I like how you've put like the reflection, like, or I don't know what you would call that, just like the shininess or, yeah. I don't know, that's a really good job. I just, yeah, I don't thanks, know. I'm excited Katie. to see that part. Yeah, <laughs> I'm excited to show you. Okay, cool. So um, our next step is pretty simple. We're gonna take a medium to small size flat brush. I'm gonna be working with my half inch flat brush and we're going to base coat the entire area of our crab in pure orange. So pretty simple. Um, I am just going to trace exactly those shapes that we just penciled in with my pure orange. I wonder why we think of like crabs as being orange or red. Maybe because that's when, that's how we see them when they're cooked. Yeah, I know, <laughs> but they're really usually, not, huh? Yeah, they're all kinds of colors actually. Yeah. I like the spotted ones. I do too. I watched this guy on YouTube who forages for crustaceans, he lives in England and he forages for crustaceans like really early in the morning and he finds like the most beautiful lobsters and crabs and mollusks. That's cool. It's very interesting yeah. though. And you do see um, a wide variety of crabs on his channel in the wild. And yeah, they're never orange or red. <laughs> <laughs> I know some shrimps kind of have like orange stripes yeah. sometimes. Yeah. It's fascinating. Like, sea creatures are so colorful down there. Like, yeah. it's a whole new, it's like a whole nother world. Totally. So everyone comment down below what your favorite sea creature is. <laughs> yes, we are dying to know yeah. what your favorite sea creature is.
What's your favorite sea creature, KT? <sighs> Octopus is pretty high mm, up there. That's a good one. Um, I like the little baby looking ones. What are those? You know what I mean? They look like kind of the little squids. The little ones, yeah. I don't. They're like really, really far down in the oh. ocean, but they look really cute. Yeah. <laughs> they got like little stubby <laughs> arms. <laughs> How about you? Probably it has to be a whale. Whales. I do yeah. love whales. Whales are pretty cool. I feel like they're just, you know, they're just chilling. They don't. They are. They're not. <laughs> Oops, somebody said a turtle. I'm oh. guessing a sea turtle. Yes, sea Good. turtles are awesome. I know it's really funny, but I'm really, like, I'm not really scared of sharks, but I'm really scared of those sunfish. <laughs> I don't know. Like, like the big uh, flat ones? Yes. Yeah. I don't know. They just look. <laughs> They're kind of creepy. <laughs> they look a little creepy yeah. to me. <laughs> I know that they wouldn't. I don't think that. I'm yeah. pretty sure they don't hurt anyone ever, but I don't know why. I'm like, <laughs> those ones are just yeah. too much for me. <laughs> So Plaid is based in Atlanta, and um, we have a pretty cool aquarium here, the Georgia Aquarium. Mm -hmm. um, and when I was in middle school, we got to spend the night at the aquarium. Whoa, that's cool. And I just remember waking up to a giant sunfish in my face, <laughs> which is probably a nightmare. <laughs> that would be, yeah. <laughs> that wouldn't be cool for Game me. Game over. Yeah. I don't know if they're like very prehistoric. I don't know. Yeah. Like it just seems like a very prehistoric yeah. animal or something. They're not very pretty. Oh, seahorses is a good one. Oh, yeah. I forgot about seahorses. I love seahorses. I do too. Okay, so once your crab looks a little something like this, um, you can go ahead and rinse your brush. And now we are going to apply some hot pink to our palette. Okay, so um, we're gonna load our brush, but not with too much paint, kind of like how we did in the beginning when we were doing our dry brush technique for the background. We don't want a lot of paint on our brush. And what I want you guys to do is we're gonna think again about our small shapes that we drew. So all of the little ovals, all of the different kind of segments of the crab's legs. And what I want you to do is picture the center of each shape and kind of start in the middle and we're gonna swirl outward so that we're just kind of adding a little bit of that pink hue to our crab, swirling so that the most paint is in the center of our shape and we're, um, we have less paint on our brush as we reach the outside of our shape. And we're gonna do that to all of our little shapes. Just kind of blending that hot pink into our pure orange. Oh, seals are a really good one too. Mm, Those are seals, really cute. Yeah. Also like jellyfish. <gasps> jellyfish. <laughs> They're amazing. I love jellyfish too. Oh, someone said, interesting fact, blue crabs rear most, the rearmost legs um, are rounded and shorter than the other legs and they're called swimmer legs. Aww. Yes. Have you seen a, have you seen a crab like swim? swim? No. It, they look like little helicopters. Aww. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Hmm. 
Okay, so we're focusing on all the little shapes. We're not going to do this to the body of our crab. That's going to be something different. Okay, so I feel good about that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hot pink that I already have on my brush and I am going to um, kind of trace the left side like about here over of the body of our crab. I'm just going to trace so we get the shape that we're following. So I'm going to make one line up there and one line down here like that. And I am going to apply some of my hot pink to this one side of our crab. And I'm not, um, I'm not uh, brushing from left to right and then right again from right to left. I'm only pushing from left to right. And you'll see that when we do that, we get kind of a loose uh, brush strokey appearance at the edge of where we are brushing um, instead of like a hard stop if that makes sense. So I'm starting at the left and I'm brushing out and I'm picking my brush up as I brush to the right. Brush, brush, brush. Kind of like that, all right? Okay, so I'm gonna rinse my brush. And then next, I'm gonna go ahead and apply to our palette some apple red and some pink. Okay, I'm taking my half inch flat brush again, drying it off. And we're gonna mirror um, what we just did to the left side of our crab with our hot pink. We're gonna do the same thing on the right side with our apple red. So I'm gonna trace how far I want my red to go. About a little less than halfway in. And even if you wanna, you know, Move your canvas a little bit, work smarter, not harder. And we're just pulling. We're pulling and then we're lifting up. So many people are turn, uh, tuning in from so many different places. Cool. Yeah. Where are we watching from? Um, we've got Canada, Brazil, um, Washington, California, Indiana. Wow. Lots of different places. I don't think anybody said the same state awesome. that I can see or country there. Rather. Well, thanks for tuning in, guys. Yeah. Um, if you're new to our Monday um, paint nights, we do a paint night every Monday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time where we teach you how to paint a painting in just about an hour. Um, they're really fun and um, really simple, and it's just a really great way to unwind, to maybe um, have a little date night or a little, you know, evening with one of your close friends. Um, it's just a really fun way to express your creativity. Okay, so I'm going to now pick up some of my pink. And we're kind of going in um, right in between our hot pink and our pure orange here. And I'm gonna mark at the bottom there and at the top here. And really, I'll, I just wanna know, you know, how far I want to go with my paint. That's all that marker is. And um, so unlike our hot pink and our apple red, when we go, we're gonna go back and forth, picking up our brush as we go so that we get that really um, fluid painterly uh, brush pattern. Back and forth and back and forth, picking up kind of like a um, pendulum. Touching down and then taking off again. And, you know, ultimately we are trying to blend together some of the colors that are already living on our canvas. I'm gonna rinse this. And lastly, I am gonna go in with my pure orange again, and I'm gonna mirror the pink, so like here and here. And we're gonna do that same technique we just did with our pink, kind of a pendulum motion, coming back and forth, blending our orange into our red and into our pink.
till our crop looks something like this. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my brush. And now for the fun part. Okay, so I am going to take a small flat brush. This is a number two flat, but I want you to use whatever brush you feel comfortable with making thin lines, whether that be a round brush or a liner brush. I like to use a small flat brush, but that's just me. So use whatever you feel the most comfortable making lines with. Um, and we're gonna go in first with our pink. So I'm gonna dip my small flat brush into my pink. And what we're gonna do is we are going to start marking the outlines of our shapes, but we're gonna do it very sparingly. So we're not totally tracing the entire shape of our little um, segments of our, of our crab, but we're just gonna kind of, almost like we're making like a highlight or an accent because it's uh, at the end it's gonna look like this. So we are adding a lot of colors to our crab. So we're just tracing the edges and now we're gonna come in towards the center of each individual shape as we're working at it. So keeping in mind, we want to leave room for some of those other colors because at the end we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five. So I'll show you guys how I'm gonna do it, but I'm not, um, you know, doing that much, that many strokes. But I'm just tracing each segment of our crab following those lines. Some segments are only gonna get one brush stroke, some are gonna get two. I would say that for every little segment of our crab, we're gonna have, um, you know, place for each color, if that makes sense. Um, but we don't wanna add too much of one color where we don't have enough room for another color at the end, if you know what I mean. Is that making sense? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Don't forget the body of our crab, so. For the body of our crab, we're gonna kind of do broken lines. So not too long, but not too short. Someone says they're inspired to do a entire series of ocean or sea creatures. Wow, awesome. Yeah. Um, that reminds me too. I do want to mention, if you decide to paint along with us tonight and you want to post your painting on social media, don't forget to hashtag plaid crafts. We're always looking under that hashtag and we'd love to see what you guys are making with our paints and with all of our different products. Okay, so those are some pink details. It's looking pretty good. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, so I'm gonna rinse my brush. Kind of following the curve of our existing pink lines. We're kind of bumping into some of our pink lines. We have lots of room for all of these little markings, so. Don't feel bashful about it. And some of them we're just kind of gonna make little dash marks. We're not even really gonna make lines, just like a little kind of polka dot almost. So we get a large variety of different um, brush strokes, which is really gonna create a lot of interest in our final crab. Oh, somebody says, I love Emma's projects. They are easy to follow and look great when you're finished. That's awesome. I really appreciate that. Okay, I'm 
Gonna rinse my brush again. Now, let's go in with our, oh, I forgot to add red to the body of my crab. Don't forget that. Let's go in with our ocean cruise. Oopsie. Have you ever been on a cruise before? I was just thinking like. <laughs> I have. Oh yeah? Um, I think I went with my sisters in high school. My parents, um, it was my graduation present. It was very fun. Um, it was my graduation from high school and nice. uh, my middle sister's graduation from college and my oldest sister's, um, actually we kind of, um, we kind of just like, uh, what's the word? Crashed her cruise because she was just going with her boyfriend. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, we want to do that too. Okay, we'll come. <laughs> we weren't really invited. What about you, KT? Have you ever been on a cruise? I haven't, actually. That's really? one thing I haven't done. Um, it sounds fun. I mean, it sounds like everything is like right there, and yeah. then you get to go visit cool places. Like, what, where did your cruise like drop off at? The Bahamas. Oh, okay, cool. Which yeah, that's pretty be cool. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And they have um, free all you can eat soft serve any time of the day. Wow. Which was one of the best parts, in my <laughs> opinion. The mega benefit. Did you go um, to the place in the Bahamas? It's like where it's got pink sand? No, I don't think so. I, th I don't know if, I, it, it, people in the comments can correct me, but I think it's the Bahamas that has like pink hmm. sand on one of their islands. Let us know. Yeah, I need, <laughs> I actually would really like to know that. <laughs> <laughs> so I can plan a trip. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now I'm just going in, um, you know, like we talked about a little while ago, uh, your crab will look more interesting depending on the uh, variety of length of your, um, you know, brush strokes. So I'm kind of going in with little dashes just where I feel like I could uh, have a little bit more blue um, just so it's not so... You know, I don't want everything to be the same size line. It's such a good technique. I mean, really, I know you're not done with all of your lines, but it's already makes it pop so much more. Yeah, totally. It's very um, pop arty, mm -hmm. I think. For sure. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in with my blue bell. That's our light blue color. Just continuing with these lines. Do 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 do. Oh, Bermuda is the pink oh, sand beach. Thank you. Sense. Someone someone saved the day. <laughs> I really wanted to know that. I know you would have had your passport and everything I all know. alone in the Bahamas looking for those pink sands. <laughs> The crab is cool. Awesome. Oh, 
Everyone, what other sea creatures would you like to paint? Yeah. That's, that's something that we would like to know. Great question. Yeah. Oh, and I just remembered, actually, I really, really love manatees. Oh, that's an excellent choice, KT. Yeah. They are really, really, they're like so chill and mm -hmm. sweet, like, and I learned <laughs> from a, um, like a documentary that there are other types of manatees like that, like I just thought they were like in Florida, I, right. but apparently there's some in like the Indian Ocean and really? then like above Australia and they're called dugongs, which I don't, I know I'm aging myself, but it's like also a Pokemon. <laughs> And I was like, I was like, what? I didn't realize that was like a real thing. But they, but they look like manatees. They just, I just, I don't know. Huh. I have to look it up after this. Yeah, they were super cute. And there was like some rescue thing, but I just had no idea that yeah. they were anywhere else in the world. Huh. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Lots of people. So octopus, for sure. Octopus is a fun thing to paint. Seahorses. Oh, a sea otter. All mm. sea otters are really great, too. Mm -hmm. Dolphins, a humpback whale, a mermaid. Stay tuned for that mermaid. Yeah, I think uh, there will be a mermaid tale at least mm -hmm. um, coming up next Monday, I believe. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Very so. soon. Yeah. Okay, so guys, we have one final step. So I talked about that black earlier that I forgot to put in our supply list. I'm so sorry. But hopefully you have some black acrylic paint. So I'm going to load my brush with a small flat brush um, with my black and I am just going to paint two little circles right about here on our crab so that he can see. Like that. And taking whatever color you want, don't forget to sign your painting. He looks so great. He's very handsome. <laughs> and with that, that is our coastal crab. So awesome. I want to thank you all so much for tuning in with us tonight. It's always a pleasure painting with you. Like always, um, if we uh, were a little bit too fast paced for you tonight, this video will live here um, for forever. So you can come back and rewind and watch it at your own pace. I invite you to um, share it with a friend who loves painting or who loves crabs. Um, yeah, so guys, thank you again. Don't forget to check out our Summerscape palette. Um, it's a really beautiful palette of folk art acrylic paints. KT put that in the, or I'm sorry, in the comment section below. So if you click there, um, you have the full library of all of those really wonderful colors. If you missed one from our painting tonight, you can find them all there. Um, so last time, thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you next Monday. Bye guys.